Welcome to a quick introduction to the TV series Married. With children, this show, which aired in the late 1980s, is known for its hilarious antics and controversial humor. But did you know there are many funny, shocking, and even sad facts about it? Keep watching this video to find out more. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this TV series? Or perhaps it's inspired or impacted your life in some way? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So if you're ready to dive into the world of Married, with children and uncover some fascinating facts, let's get started. Get ready for laughs, surprises, and maybe even a few tears along the way. In the late 1980s, a television show emerged that shook up the sitcom scene. It broke the mold with its daring humor and unconventional take on family life. Despite polarizing opinions, this TV series left a lasting impression on entertainment culture. It challenged norms, inspired spin-offs, and influenced a new wave of comedy. This groundbreaking show, though divisive, sparked a shift in television comedy. It dared to tackle taboo subjects and brought dysfunctional family dynamics to the forefront. Its bold storytelling and irreverent humor set a new standard for what audiences could expect from sitcoms. Beyond the TV screen, this show's impact stretched into merchandise and spin-offs. Characters introduced in the series found their own spotlight in a short-lived spin-off, while merchandise capitalized on a dedicated fan base. Today, echoes of this influential show can still be found in modern comedies. Its daring spirit and unconventional approach continue to inspire storytellers and entertain audiences. In summary, this TV series, though controversial in its time, left an undeniable mark on entertainment. Its daring humor and unapologetic portrayal of family life resonated with audiences and continue to influence comedy today. In a memorable episode of the show, one character shared with another the idea that it's kind of decent to leave the world at 13. Funny enough, five years later in the series, the Griffins said goodbye to their faithful family dog who happened to pass away at that exact age. Adding more to the coincidence, Peggy's birthday fell on April 12, the same as the real actor Ed O'Neill, who played Al Bundy. It's like the stars lined up to make the show a bit more real. Talking about the actors themselves, Ted McGinley and his wife, Gigi Rice, have two sons in real life, Beau Martin McGinley and Quinn Thomas McGinley. It's interesting how the actors' lives and the made-up stories come together. These small connections between real life and fiction add another layer to the characters and stories, making the show even more interesting for viewers. It's like a special narrative that blurs the lines between the married, with children world and the lives of the people who acted in it. After the popular show Married, with Children Ended, some of the original creators worked on a new series called Unhappily Ever After. This wasn't just a coincidence. The people in charge at the WB Network purposely brought in the creator of Married with Children to make this new show, hoping it would be a big hit for them like the first show was for Fox. They even jokingly called it Divorce with Children, one of the actors from Married. With Children, Katie Seagolf played a very different role in another show called Eight Simple Rules. Instead of playing a flashy character like she did in Married. With children, she was a more serious mom in the new show. In her personal life, Katie Seagull went through a tough time in 1989 when she lost her baby after being pregnant for two months. These stories show how things change after a popular show ends and how actors take on different roles. It also reminds us that people in the entertainment industry face personal struggles too. Ed O'Neill, known for his role as Al Bundy, expressed in interviews his commitment to the show for 11 seasons. He believed continuing would lead to typecasting and feared limited opportunities after its end. However, his concerns proved unfounded as he went on to star in other successful projects like Big Apple, Dragnet, and notably Modern Family. Christina Applegate faced a health scare when diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. Thankfully, early detection and treatment led to a full recovery after a double mastectomy. Notably, in the show's opening sequence, footage from National Lampoon's vacation features the Griswold Station Wagon. In crafting Peggy Bundy's character, Katie Seagull envisioned a playful parody of the 1960s housewife, opting for a wardrobe inspired by that era. She introduced Peggy's iconic look, complete with a red bouffant wig, during her audition, which resonated well with the producers and seamlessly made its way into the show. Meanwhile, Christina Applegate's personal life intertwined with her professional journey as she got engaged to Martin Lenoble, her partner since July 2008, following his romantic proposal on a Palm Springs beach in February 2010. Despite its popularity, the show holds the distinction of being the longest-running series to never receive an Emmy until Baywatch claimed that title upon its cancellation in 2001. 
In one memorable scene, Al unexpectedly falls off the roof in a really funny episode of the show. People loved it and voted it one of the funniest moments. As for the side characters, Steve's middle name is Bartholomew, which adds a bit of humor to his character. The show also had some spin-offs. One was called Top of the Heap, later renamed Vinny and Bobby. There were two other spin-off ideas explored in certain episodes, but they never became full shows. These stories give us a peek into the different directions the show could have gone. In the series, Nomagam stands for National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. Christina Applegate, one of the actors from Hall Pass, became a first-time parent the same year as her co-stars Owen Wilson, Jenna Fisher, and Alyssa Milano. Kelly's birthday, November 25, 1971, coincides with Christina Applegate's birthday. This shared date adds an interesting layer to her character's persona. It's a neat tidbit that connects the actress to her role. In 1987, Fox Broadcasting Company launched its first big TV series. It aired on April 5 at 7.00 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and caught attention by replaying its first episode twice in one night. During the finale of its second season called Married, with children all in the family, there were plans for Divine to appear as Uncle Otto. Sadly, Divine passed away the night before filming at LA's Regency Plaza Suites Hotel. So, the episode became a tribute to Divine's memory. Some people thought the show was pretty conservative, like John Derbyshire from the National Review. But the main actor, Ed O'Neill, was actually a strong supporter of the Democratic Party. Before his role in Modern Family, O'Neill even made a campaign video for Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign, acting as his character, Al the Shoe Salesman. However, Katie Sagal, another important actor, disagreed that the show had any political ideas. She thought the show was just meant to be funny and entertaining for 20 minutes and didn't want it to be seen as political. Married. With Children was a special show on TV because it had a mix of humor and different political views among its actors. It focused on being entertaining instead of talking about politics, making it stand out on television. In several episodes, viewers might catch a glimpse of Katie Sagal's natural brunette hair peeking out from under the red wig she dons to portray Peggy. When the news of the show's cancellation reached Ed O'Neill, he engaged in a conversation with a Fox executive. The idea pitched involved crafting a final episode where the Bundys, upon winning the lottery, faced their demise in the midst of celebrating courtesy of a tornado. Tim Conway, known for his role in the series, shared a history of collaboration with co-star Harvey Corman beyond The Carol Burnett Show. Their comedic partnership extended to projects like Touched by an Angel and Hot in Cleveland. However, Conway's most frequent collaborator was Vicki Lawrence, with six joint ventures, including Yes, Dear, and Hermie and Friends. The camaraderie between cast members extended beyond the screen, creating a web of connections that added depth to their professional relationships. Often likened to Homer Simpson from The Simpsons, Al Bundy is a central figure in this long-running sitcom. Following the conclusion of its seventh season, Married, with Children alludes to the mysterious disappearance of Seven, a character whose absence becomes a recurring theme. In the eighth season, episodes like Kelly Knows Something and Ride Scare subtly reference Seven's vanishing act, with Al distracting Kelly from Buck and Seven's face appearing as missing on the Bundy's milk carton. Notably, the show's original pilot featured Tina Caspery as Kelly and Hunter Carson as Bud. However, the producers were dissatisfied and decided that both actors should pursue better spirited opportunities. Tina Caspery and Hunter Carson's roles were subsequently recast with Christina Applegate and David Faustino, ironically as Caspery and Carson's acting careers saw limited success, lasting only about three, four more years. In November 17th, Al scored a record-breaking touchdown, marking a memorable moment in the series. Despite not ranking in the top 20 shows for Nielsen ratings during its original airing on Fox, it garnered a strong following in syndication and DVD sales post-1997. Its highest rated season hit 29 in the ratings, with other seasons ranging in the 40s and 50s. The set used for Al Bundy's shoe store was previously seen as the travel agency in the final season of One Day at a Time where Barbara and Max worked. Observant viewers might notice the new market mall sign outside the windows of the travel agency in a few episodes of One Day at a Time. In a nod to the executive producer of the Cosby show, Marcy Carcy, the name Marcy D'Arcy was crafted. Initially titled Not the Cosbys, the show took a distinct direction from its working title. Ed O'Neill, a central figure in the series, finds his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame stationed in front of a humble shoe store, a juxtaposition of glamour and everyday life. 
Christina Applegate and David Faustino, pivotal cast members, shared the screen in an episode of 21 Jump Street, solidifying their presence beyond the world of married with children. These connections highlight the intertwining paths within the entertainment industry, underscoring the diverse experiences of its players. In the series, much of the actors' lives were reflected. For instance, he played college football, hence his character bragged about high school football. Similarly, one actor aspired to be a rapper, which influenced his character's alter ego. Despite the show's setting in Chicago, it's never explained why Peggy attended the same high school as her husband, who hailed from Wisconsin. Additionally, although it's implied that one character is younger, both actors were born in the same year, with him being slightly older than her. In one episode, Kelly reveals the Bundy's phone number, which is 555 2878. Almost every time Al watches his favorite show, Psycho Dad, the theme song lyrics are different. A group named The Bones utilized all of these different verses to record an actual almost three-minute song. They, however, excluded certain ones like the Christmas episode when Peg watches Psycho Mom or when Marcy sings Loser Al to the tune. Al's favorite song is Duke of Earl by Gene Chandler, and he was also fond of Arthur Alexander Zana. In its heyday, Ed O'Neill, the lead actor of the show, would kindly fulfill requests to make birthday and holiday phone calls to fans, staying in character as Al Bundy. He had a funny rule, though. He insisted on making collect calls. This showed O'Neill's playful side and his desire to connect with the show's loyal fans. Another interesting thing was that David Faustino, another actor on the show, was pals with Corin Nemec, which added to the friendly atmosphere behind the scenes. Now, about the Bundy family's house, if you look closely, you might have noticed something cool from far away, the door seemed plain white, but up close, it was actually a bold red color. This small detail could reflect the different sides of the Bundy family's life. These little facts give us a peek into what went on behind the camera and show how much thought went into making the show special. In other roles, Ted McGinley had previously worked with Marion Ross's close friend Gavin McLeod in several episodes of The Love Boat. Peg's preferred television programs include The Oprah Winfrey Show and Psycho Mom. Following its initial run, the series gained significant popularity through syndicated reruns. As Fox had limited coverage when it first aired, many viewers encountered the episodes for the first time during syndication. David Garrison noted that reruns contributed to his continued recognition and fanbase growth even after departing the show in 1990. In 1996, UK broadcasters Carlton Television created a remake of Married for Life for ITV. This version featured the Butler family from the early episodes. However, it didn't gain traction and ended after just seven weeks. Tim Conway gained fame on the Carol Burnett show for his ability to make his fellow cast members, especially co-star Harvey Corman, break into laughter during taping. Unlike many shows, these moments were often kept in the final episodes. Christina Applegate, known for her role in Married with Children, has a daughter named Sadie Grace Lenable with her husband Martin Lenable. Sadie was born in 2011 at Cedars Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, Ca. In the initial stages, Sam Kinison and Rosen Barr were the prime choices for the roles of Al and Peg Bundy. Interestingly, Kinison eventually made a guest appearance as Al's guardian angel. Throughout the series, Al humorously targeted Roseanne with several jokes. Moving to Katie Sagal, her younger brother, Joey Sagal, had brief appearances in a couple of episodes. The familial connection added an interesting dynamic to the show's behind-the-scenes interactions. Christina Applegate, known for her portrayal of Kelly, differed significantly from her on-screen persona. Co-stars noted her intelligence and talent, emphasizing that she adeptly portrayed the dumb blonde with just one or two takes. And O'Neill, praising Applegate's performance, acknowledged that only an actress of her caliber could convincingly pull off the role. In summary, the series had its share of interesting casting decisions and behind-the-scenes dynamics, creating a unique atmosphere on set. In its first season, David Faustino, one of the actors, had an interesting experience at a busy shopping center. Even though he wore a shirt with the show's logo, nobody recognized him. Ed O'Neill's character, Al Bundy, likes simple movies. He enjoys watching Hondo and Shane because they match his taste. Tim Conway, who worked with Ernest Borgnine on McHale's Navy in 1962, revealed they had a great working relationship. Conway shared how much he enjoyed working with Borgnine, showing how well they got along. These stories give us a peek into what happens behind the scenes and the actors' personal likes. It helps us understand more about the show and the people in it. The Bundy and Rhodes families were named after pro wrestlers King Kong Bundy and Dusty Rhodes, respectively. 
Contrary to popular lore, they weren't named after serial killer Ted Bundy. David Garrison left the series to continue Broadway. In a 2013 interview, Ed O'Neill revealed that Amanda Barris was the only regular cast member he didn't get along with. They grew apart after the third season. O'Neill felt she became more masculine and snarky. They argued over trivial matters. Despite supporting Bears' decision to come out as a lesbian in 1993, O'Neill and David Faustino weren't invited to her wedding in 2010, reportedly because Bears was afraid they would laugh at the sight of two women in tuxedos. In the world of television, behind-the-scenes dynamics aren't always harmonious. Take, for instance, the cast of this iconic show. While Al and Marcy may have clashed on screen, it turns out that the real-life relationship between Ed O'Neill and Amanda Bears mirrored this tension. Amidst the amusing chaos of Al Bundy's life, one constant was his fondness for a fictional Western TV show called Psycho Dad. This quirky detail provided a glimpse into Al's character, adding a layer of humor to the series. Another interesting facet revolves around Al's workplace. The shoe store where he toiled day in and day out bore the name Gary Shoes and accessories for today's woman. However, Al's revelation that the supposed Gary was, in fact, a woman added an unexpected twist to his daily grind much to his chagrin. Navigating through the intricacies of character relationships and quirky details married, with children brought humor to the mundane. It's fascinating to uncover these tidbits that contributed to the show's unique charm. In the 1987 TV series Married, with children, several interesting facts surround the cast and production. Matt Leblock, known for his role as Joey Tribune in Friends, was stepfather to Tyler and Jacqueline from his ex-wife's first marriage. On The Late Show with Stephen Colbert in October 2016, he mentioned having three kids, a 25-year-old, a 22-year-old, and a 12-year-old. Tim Conway, another notable figure, partnered with Ernie Anderson for local television comedy in Cleveland before moving away. Al's friend, Bob Rooney, always gets called by his full name, even during intimate moments, as evidenced when his wife exclaimed, Oh, Bob Rooney. In the series, Al and Peggy share their first names with a 1950s radio program, the Couple Next Door, starring Peg Lynch and Al Bunce. Katie Seagull, one of the cast members, faced issues with Buck the Dog, who kept trying to hump her leg both on and off the set. Producers considered letting Buck go if his owner couldn't control him, potentially removing the family pet from the show altogether. Interestingly, Katie Seagull had a prior experience in the music industry. She was hired to sing backup for Bob Dylan during his 1978 tour, but got fired along with half the band a week before it started. In the series, various supporting characters had short-lived roles akin to Seven. For instance, Al's colleague Luke Ventura appeared in the debut season, while Amber, the DRC's niece, featured in the ninth season. Additionally, Aaron, Al's initial shoe store sidekick, also made an appearance in season nine. Initially uncertain about Ed O'Neill's suitability for the role of Al Bundy due to his dramatic background, the producers changed their minds after witnessing his audition. Ironically, O'Neill became so closely associated with his character that he encountered challenges in securing dramatic roles post the show's run. In a memorable episode where Kelly works at Teveland, a group of kids approaches Jefferson DRC for his autograph, prompting a reference to Happy Days. When asked about the love boat, he denies being part of it, although McGinley did appear in both shows as Roger Phillips and Ashley Covington Evans, respectively. In its early episodes, subtle nods to Motorhead's mascot Snaggletooth can be observed superimposed on a red ace of spades adorning Kelly's bedroom door. The character Al, played by Ed O'Neill, has a recurring preference for a magazine titled Big Guns, reminiscent of Playboy. Interestingly, Griff, Al's African-American store companion, is seen engrossed in a similar publication named Black Big Guns in various scenes. Moreover, during a Cuban escapade, a fictionalized Fidel Castro is depicted perusing another analogous magazine called Cub Buns. Surprisingly, after garnering unexpected popularity among young adults in Germany, the show prompted the creation of a German adaptation titled Hilt, Main Family Spent. The network RTL meticulously translated the scripts and jokes from the original 1987-88 season. The central family was named Strunk. However, despite its efforts, the German version met an untimely end after just one season. This journey into unexpected success and overseas adaptations highlights the show's unique impact and reception transcending cultural boundaries. Following David Garrison's departure due to his passion for live theater, a storyline was crafted to depict Steve and Marcy growing apart. Garrison left the series with an enlarged mugshot photo of himself, 
Caption, gotta sing, gotta dance, gotta fucking starve to death, as a token from the producers. Despite leaving, he made periodic returns with Steve depicted in various professions. Al Bundy, born on November 7, 1948, remains a central character. Notably, the shoe store features a credit card sign reading Vista instead of Visa. David Faustino, alongside his brother Michael, starred in a MySpace series based on Neil Strauss' rules of the game in July 2011. Ed O'Neill suggested that the series was canceled due to the high cost of rights, with local stations paying $1 million per episode to carry reruns. Katie Segal, Ed O'Neill, and Christina Applegate initially doubted the show's success, but were amused by the pilot script and joined the cast for fun. In the realm of television, there was a sitcom that dared to push the limits. It showcased a dysfunctional family with unconventional humor, revealing the talents of its cast beyond their characters' antics. One prominent member of the cast, known for her role, displayed her creativity in unexpected ways. Teaming up with co-stars from a movie she was in, she co-wrote a humorous song, stepping outside the bounds of traditional sitcom work. During her time on the show, she faced a unique challenge. While performing on stage for a Broadway-bound musical, she suffered an injury. Despite this setback, she made her Broadway debut and even earned a Tony Award nomination for her performance. Another cast member showcased a different side of his talent. His character on the show parodied his real-life pursuit of a rap career, adding a personal touch to the humor. In summary, the TV show not only brought laughter, but also highlighted the diverse talents of its cast, from creative ventures to musical aspirations. In the unconventional world of the Bundy family, peculiarities extend beyond their quirky dynamics. British viewers catch an extra layer of humor when the local Reverend Felcher occasionally pops up adding a unique twist to the comedic tapestry. When Katie Segal auditioned for the iconic show, she brought her own touch to Peg Bundy's character. Dressed in 1960s attire, a creative choice that shaped Peg's style and added a distinctive flavor to the series. In a Futurama episode titled The Bicyclops Built for Two, the show takes a playful jab at the Bundy's universe. Leela, voiced by Katie Segal, encounters a Cyclops man named Alcazar. The episode unfolds as a spoof of Married, with children, with Leela marrying Alcazar and affectionately calling him Al. Seagull's dual role adds a quirky connection between two distinct animated worlds. In these subtle yet noteworthy details married, with children's influence stretches beyond its own runtime, leaving a lasting imprint on pop culture. Amanda Bears, known for her role as Marcy Rhoda's DRC, took on directing duties for several episodes. She balanced acting and directing in the series. Tim Conway's comedic talent was discovered by Rose Marie, leading to his audition for the Steve Allen Plymouth show. His impressive performance secured him a regular spot on the show, marking the beginning of his successful career. Peggy's maiden name, Wanker, hints at the humorous tone of the series. Her fictional relatives reside in Wanker County, Wisconsin, adding to the comedic setting. Interestingly, Wanker is British slang for masturbator, adding a layer of irony to Peggy's character. These elements added depth and humor to the show, making it a memorable part of television history. Roseanne Barr declined the opportunity to portray Peg Bundy, preferring to infuse her own comedic style into her own show, Roseanne. Interestingly married, with children was the second sitcom set in Chicago, following Family Matters, which aired concurrently on ABC. Although both shows aired simultaneously, Family Matters concluded its run a year after Married, with children ended in 1997. In a unique twist, a backdoor pilot for a friend spinoff was attempted in season 10, episode 23, titled Enemies. Christina Applegate, a key figure in Married, with children, later made an appearance on Friends as Rachel's sister Amy. This dynamic interplay between sitcoms highlights the interconnectedness of television during that era. In the Bundy household, food packaging was slyly shown with recognizable brands, though names were concealed. Safeway and Alpha Beta Supermarkets house brand items often made appearances along with the Bundy's preference for Tang and Al's occasional choice of Budweiser beer. Katie Siegel faced three pregnancies during the show's decade-long run. In the early days of season six, her pregnancy was incorporated into the storyline, but later written out due to a miscarriage. The second pregnancy occurred in 1994, spanning late season eight to early season nine. The third pregnancy, concealed from the audience, unfolded during season 10 from 1995-1996. Ted McGinley, known for his role, credits much of his acting success to Marion Ross, his mentor from Happy Days. Their bond began at 22, evolving into a lasting friendship that played a pivotal role in McGinley's career. 
Becoming the longest running American primetime scripted series after murder, she wrote Married. With children held this title until its final episode on June 9, 1997. It marked a significant milestone as the first Fox series to achieve this distinction, later succeeded by Murphy Brown. Matt LeBlanc, a member of the cast, faced a personal challenge when his daughter Marina LeBlanc was diagnosed with a rare brain disorder affecting her motor skills. Concerns heightened when seizures began at 11 months old. However, by the age of two, Marina's condition had notably improved, bringing relief to her parents, Matt and Melissa LeBlanc. Throughout the show, the main cast brought a touch of family into the scenes. Ed O'Neill's wife, Catherine Russoff, made two appearances, while David Faustino's brother, Michael Faustino, had a couple of cameos. Christina Applegate's mother, Nancy Pretty, made an appearance, and Katie Sagal's brother, Joey Sagal, also had roles. Notably, Elaine Hendricks and Juliet Tablack at one point were David Faustino's girlfriends, adding a personal dynamic to the show. In essence, married. With children not only claimed a lasting primetime scripted series record, but also integrated the personal lives of its stars into the storyline, featuring their family members and guest appearances. In the early stages of casting, Michael Richards, famous for later playing Kramer in Seinfeld, tried out for the role of Al Bundy. It's interesting to note that Christina Applegate and Mila Jovovich, who would later become well-known in Hollywood, were classmates in school, but their paths took different directions in their careers. Al Bundy's cool car, often called his Mighty Dodge, is actually a 1972 Plymouth Duster. This detail is often missed by casual viewers. Even though it might seem small, it adds to the charm and realness of the character. It shows that Al likes to keep things from his past. Choosing the duster says a lot about Al, showing how he holds on to things from an earlier time, just like when he talks about his glory days playing football. These little details in making the show help make it special and important in culture, making it loved by many generations, 